Good morning, YouTube. So I put this together a while back. This is a Raspberry Pi with a 7-inch touch screen. So it's got a 2500 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery in there and then a, a small charge controller power supply board. And this, I think, puts out 2 amps and then it, it handles the lithium BMS charging, discharging, all that sort of stuff. And then you've got your touch screen here. Let me turn on the power. I haven't quite got everything finished up. I didn't do the back of the case or anything yet. But you can see it's booting into Linux there. I guess this is a, called a Pi Pad. So it's a Raspberry Pi tablet, kind of like an iPad. But uh, anyway, I kind of built this and I was wanting to make a little handheld Raspberry Pi that I could do various projects with. I like this case because it has the USB ports accessible. This does have a back to it. I need to needed to finish mounting things and one thing I wanted to do here was this didn't have very good power management because the switch just directly controls this so you have to do a shutdown here. So you do a shutdown this thing will shut down, but you have to also go over here and turn off the power. So I picked up a smart switch from Palolu. You can wire into some of the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi to get it to automatically power off the power supply. And you can hit the button and tell the Raspberry Pi to shut down. But I didn't quite get there. I also came up with a new idea that I wanted to use this for, or use a touch screen. I'm thinking about building an Android Auto head unit out of this using the Raspberry Pi version of Android Auto. So I was thinking, oh, I need to buy another touch screen and another Raspberry Pi so I can build that. And then I thought, wait a minute, I was looking around and I found something a little different. So this is a company that makes a Raspberry Pi laptop. Got the modular laptop and then it's got some games and various projects you can do, programming and electronics projects. But what I was kind of interested in was this laptop. So yeah, this has a 1080p liquid crystal screen, a keyboard, touchpad. You put your Raspberry Pi inside. I think it has an eight to nine hour battery included. Power supply and everything's all built in. So this is kind of what I wanted to build was almost a laptop. So you have your keyboard and everything. So let's take a look at that. So you have to purchase a Raspberry Pi separately. So I did that. Let's see. I think this is probably the power supply. Oh, okay. So it's oh, it's got a universal plug there. So you got US, UK, and European style plugs. That's your power adapter. So that's pretty nice. Oh, and then here's your uh, hardware kit. So let's take a look at this uh, modular laptop here. Yeah, I mean, wow, that is sweet somehow slides out here. Yeah, there you go. So the, the neat thing is the keyboard slides out. Let me get rid of this box here so I have a little more room. Yeah, oh, that is nice. Put your Raspberry Pi inside of here and then you can add modules. Yeah, one thing I picked up was one of their speakers. How to put all these together. But yeah, you can you can actually build little circuits in there. Oh yeah, so you got little breadboard, components, jumpers, LEDs. So I guess all of these things can sit on these, I don't know, they sit on those rails? So these are like magnetic rails. But yeah, I'll have to figure out how this works. I picked up a new Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. See, there's your inventor guide. I don't know if I'll really play with that, but the laptop comes with the Pi Top OS. You need to add your Pi 3. Oh, and, yeah, and this one has a cooling, built-in cooling bridge. There's your SD card. Yeah, so you got to put the Raspberry Pi in there. Yeah, 
yeah, so I guess this, this is what plugs into your Raspberry Pi, picks up the audio and video. I, I guess this uses HDMI. Nice thing is this one seems to have the built-in power management. I think this will be a lot better for what I really wanted to do because I wanted to be able to plug plug various adapters in and take this if I want to go out and try some uh, open source software to read data off my charge controllers. I can just use this take it out in the back in the patio and I've got a keyboard so I can type because with with this one with the touch screen you can do that but then you have to have a separate keyboard I have a wireless keyboard for this but it's one of those little chiclet sized keyboards not very uh, usable and if you get a full size keyboard then you, know, you got that and the other thing I found is the resolution of this, I think it's a 720 by 350 screen, and a lot of the programs in Debian end up going off the bottom of the screen, and so you either have to shrink the font size down, or you've got to keep scrolling up and down to access, like the exit men, you know, the exit button is is off the screen, so you got to scroll down and then exit and so it just makes it a little bit hard to use where this one being a 1080p screen is going to be a lot nicer and look at the size difference you can have full screen and you can still read what's going on so i think this will be a really nice usable system so the ports come right out of the back of the raspberry pi there you got your power and Ethernet to USB ports, yeah, 15 volts, two and a half amps. So you've got a 3S 3500 milliamp hour battery in there. Where this one is 1S and 2500. So you've got, yeah, you probably got maybe five times the runtime because I I think this one does about two hours runtime, where this is like eight to nine hours. So this, this thing is a real usable system, and I, I'm going to turn this into my Android Auto head unit. So yeah, I'll uh, bring you back once I get a Raspberry Pi plugged in there, and we'll see what it looks like.